15 kills, 12 digs. BYU plays at LMU tomorrow, 3 Eastern, on the W.TV. Making his BYU Sports Nation debut and joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is ESPN NFL analyst, former NFL running back, and Idaho State Bengal Merrill Hodge. Merrill, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. It's good to be on your show, fellas. How you guys doing? Fantastic. So you recently had cool. open heart surgery. What? Uh, how is your health? <laughs> That's what I said. When the doctor said, uh, you got to get that fixed, I said, how do you do that? He's like, surgery. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, just to, to make a long story really, really short, um, it, it went, the surgery went perfect. Um, I'm back to perfect health. I'm actually in shock, quite honestly, how quickly I've recovered. But... Um, only because I think with open heart surgery, a nurse put it in probably the best perspective for me when I came out, when I was in the ICU unit, when I just came out of surgery, she's like, you know, we shut your whole body down and off and now it's got to restart itself. And that really kind of put a perspective on the, uh, the significance and the trauma that your body goes through. But I've invested in my health my entire life. I've always found great value um, in just, A, how I've been able to live my life in the way that I've been able to be active and the things I've been able to do. But it's it's helped me through my head trauma that ended my career in football, cancer that I was diagnosed with 13 years ago, and then this. And then this one probably more than the other two, um, just the value of taking care of your body and investing in your health, how much it has paid off for me and how well I feel, how Things I can do now that are, you know, I've already been clear to get back to work. Um, I do a lot of things that I was doing prior to it, and it's only been a little over two weeks. So very blessed, very grateful, and uh, thank you for asking, buddy. Well, that's great news. Uh, great to see that. And we've, we've seen some different tweets and Instagram photos you sent out. Uh, you look ripped. Bo looks ripped. Who's more ripped? <laughs> God, I hate Bo. Bo is so <laughs> bad thing. I when Bo and I work out, I'm like, you know something, this is not fair. I mean, I, I work, my, I have to work my butt off to just come close to that kid. He's so gifted physically, um, you know, genetically. He's just, he just was blessed with a, a, um, you know, just, a, you know, I've been to um, training and nutrition. You know, I'm Bo's, you know, passionate about taking care of his body as well. But um, he is just proportionally as athletic gifted as I've ever seen. Like his bellies of his muscles are a lot longer. Like his legs are longer than mine. He's, he's got better hips. He's got a better core. He's got better, better everything. But um, when he and I stand up, he's about a half inch taller than I am. He's about six one and a half. But when he when he stands and puts his arm over the top of me, because one day I was having him help me do some stuff downstairs, and I'm like, now, boy, you're going to stand on your tippy toes to hold this. And he <laughs> He, when he puts his arms in the air, he's like four inches taller than I am. I'm like, get the heck out of here. Look how <laughs> long your arms are, man. But now nah, he's a he's a blessed kid that he's so um he's so ripped and he'll and he takes pride in taking care of his body. So um he'll stay like that for as long as he wants to if he stays after like that. Merrill Hodge with us on BYU Sports Nation. His son Bo plays quarterback at BYU. We expect to see a lot of run from him tomorrow against Wagner. What are you hoping to see tomorrow from Bo when he gets on the field against the Seahawks of Wagner? Well, what I you know, Bo's gifted in so many areas, um, and I hope that you know what he's going to have hopefully against Wagner that he hasn't had in other in the outing against East, East Carolina was the. Um, just, he'll be more prepared. You know, he has more reps. He's he's done a lot more the last couple of weeks in order to be prepared. You know, I he wasn't happy with his performance um, when he got in uh, at the game a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, we just talked about when he was a junior, a similar thing happened to him. We played again across the river here in Ohio, um, a, a team called Elder, which is one of the best teams in the country. You always see him in the top 25 in high school. And we had him on the ropes. Now, Bo was a junior. Um, so he's playing more wide receiver than he was quarterback and the quarterback got hurt and he had to come in for the last drive of the game. And I want to say we had like a timeout a minute, 43 seconds. So we had really had plenty of time. And, um, I, I want to say he completed one and it had three incompletions and, you know, we ended up losing the game and, you know, he obviously was a similar situation to a couple weeks ago. And I, I said, well, let me ask something, Bo, how many reps have you got this week? And how many times did you go through that two-minute situation? He's like, well, I don't get a practice quarterback at all. I've never been to that. I go, well, then, you know, I know you're disappointed and I know you're upset, but that's why you prepare. 
And when you haven't been prepared and you haven't been in those situations and the coach is not prepared for that, you know, if you got what you, I mean, you kind of, you get what you prepare for, you know, and I go, that's not your fault. You know, they, there's only so more reps, so many reps and times you have, and, you know, they didn't give him that time. And, you know, and I go, but that's a great lesson for when you do have the time, you get the reps, how valuable they are. And when you do prepare, it's like, you know, that's what I love about sports is that it's a great, they're great life lessons there. Preparation is probably the most vital thing in anything that we do in life, you know, schooling, work, whatever we're doing. You got to be prepared. You got to do the work in order to execute to a high level. And when you don't get that, then the results are going to be like that. And, you know, that's why preparing is so vital. So it's been, you know, some good lessons for him and how to prepare the value in preparing so that you can perform at a high level. What was it like for you as a father when you saw Tanner Mangum uh, get carried off the field and you knew Bo was going to come in that next series against East Carolina? Well, you know, first of all, I don't ever like to see you know, anybody on our team get hurt. Um, and I was kind of bummed because, you know, I was really hoping Bo to get a red shirt this year. You know, it, it got to the point I really thought that that would happen for him. Um, but – there's also a certain sense of excitement to see him walk out on that field. In fact, Lesson, I was, was I four days removed from heart surgery? Yeah, I think it was four to five days because Bo called me after and his first word was, how's your heart? What? <laughs> I was That's like, a good yeah, question. I go, yeah, thanks, thanks, son. Because I was only like five days removed from open heart surgery, too, so when this happens, too. So when I'm, I'm like, and I knew it was going to happen. I swear to you, I knew when I had scheduled this surgery, I was like, I'm going to tell you this, somehow he's going to end up on that field, and I'm not going to be there, which that bummed me out the most. I've been to every game. I coached him for seven, eight years, and to not be there bummed me out. But to watch him and, you know, and listen, at the end of the day, I mean, I thought he performed as good as you can perform based on the preparation that he had. You know, I, I didn't see a kid who was overwhelmed by it. Did he perform like he wanted to? No. And like he can? No. But that will be different Saturday. Mine will be a lot different Saturday. What was the decision like in his picking out a college and, and making the decision to come to BYU uh, as you watched him go through that recruitment process? Well, you know, Bo's story is somewhat unique. Um, you know, Bo really targeted BYU. That's where he wanted to go. Um, we, even though we did a bunch of junior days at some different schools from Utah State, to LSU, to Cincinnati, to Pitt, um, that's where he wanted to play. And, uh, you know, so we went there on one of his junior days, and then we came back during the season. I can't remember what game it was. It might have been UNLV because I remember it was cold as can be. But, um, you know, they offered him at that game, and um, I actually thought Bo would, uh, was going to say, tell Bronco, uh, commit right then. And we're on our way back to the car. I'm like, wow. I, go, I was shocked you didn't commit to him. And he's like, well, Dad, I, gotta, I got some other schools I need to tell first before I commit. And I was like, gosh, dang it, Bo, here, here I am, a dad learning a lesson again for my son. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Cause I, was, I was about ready to kick him in the leg. Like, Bo, is this where you want to be? What are you doing? <laughs> and, he, and I was like, I had such respect for him. I was like, yeah, you know what, Bo, that, is, that was the right thing to do and the better thing to do. Even though he could have committed and the next day told him, but he didn't want to do it in that order, and I have great respect for that. And He wanted to do it in that order. So, um, you know, no matter how many scholarships you're offered, you can only take one. And um, he got to go where he's, his heart desired, and I was there at BYU. And I've really been impressed by Bo's character as well. Met him on uh, the, the trip before signing day in February. Uh, you know, met him this fall a couple times. I've, I've really been impressed by that as well. BYU's 5-2 and two so far, Merrill. What do you think of BYU's team so far this year? Well, listen, I, I love – you know, I've watched them from the very beginning, you know, and I know some of the mindsets they were trying to – to, to create, you know, a, you know, a tougher and a finish mentality. And you can see that, you know, they have, they've practiced that and they've worked hard on that from the very beginning and that's starting to pay off in a lot of games, you know, defensively, they do such a good job. You know, watching them, how they pressure is interesting. Cause I, you know, I'm just sitting here studying the Denver Broncos actually. So I'm, I'm looking at all the past plays that they have defended this year. I'm watching their defense, which is 274. So I'm about 200 into it. And, you know, as you watch all the pressures and schemes that they apply, you know, they're, not, they're a lot more significant. They're faster. They're more efficient because they're pros. They have all the time to devote there. But, you know, BYU, their defense, you know, when they come down, if, if 
if it's a pass oriented scheme that they got to defend, they're going to match up against anybody in the country. You know, they just do such a good job from that. They have such good athletes and they do such a good job of their timing and their, the speed and the scheme in which they, they blitz in, um, you know, passing game. I mean, or the offense, you know, the, the coaches have done a good job of having to transform from one style to another. And, you know, that's taken a little bit of time, but they've really done a good job of molding into Tanner's strengths, which is the really thing, the smartest. I've always believed that if you want to be a great coach, be flexible. Be able to mold and um, form your philosophy to fit the strength of your players. And uh, they're only getting better. You can see that they're getting better on both sides of the ball. So um, it was unfortunate they ran into, you know, a buzz on Michigan. Um, and even UCLA game, gosh, dang, they had that game. But, you know what, listen, to have the record they have with the brutal schedule they've had, they, uh, I've been impressed with them. And they're gonna, they'll are gonna they finish really strong as the season goes on. Merrill Hodge with us on BYU Sports Nation, father of BYU quarterback Bo Hodge, ESPN NFL analyst. You mentioned you coached Bo for eight years. So right now, what is the message to him from you about what he needs to work on and where he needs to get better? Well, you know, we've got to talk to Bo every week about just being ready. You know, you got to be ready, Bo, at all times. And you can, and being ready is, you know, you know that's that's a little different. You can only you only get a few reps. Um, I go, but during the game, you know, stay involved with what's going on. Now, understand what they're doing. And actually, in the East Carolina game, that was the one thing that I was most impressed with. And he he told me he's like, you know, Dad. Now, when he said it was faster than he expected, that, that is completely. That happens to everybody. It is so much faster than you expect. But he could tell everything that was going to – he goes, I knew what coverage they were in. I knew when they were rotating. He goes, I was late on a few things because it was so fast. And that's understandable. But he could identify what was going on, and he understood what they were doing, which are all good signs that he sees those things early on. And the goal that, he, that we talk about all the time is that – as a freshman, I've always believed this. As a freshman and a rookie, I did it. People always want to say, I'll oh, get in front of the line, you know, be the first one. I tell Bo, don't you ever get in front of the line and be first in line, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Because the best way to fail and look bad, be smart, get back to the line, and watch and learn. And that's really what we've talked about this year. I think Bo's done a good job of just trying to learn, you know, getting back to the line. Now, there'll be a time that he's in the front of the line, but that's when he's – more prepared and has the things more experienced. And until that happens, he won't be in front of the line. He'll be in the back of the line. But, um, you know, Saturday, I hope he does play a lot because you, you get to see that he is a very gifted player. And I don't say that as a dad. I mean, I've coached him for a long time. I've been able to separate him and the 22 other kids I coached for nearly a decade and watch them. He is a special player and has this tremendous gifts. And he has things you can't teach from composure his arm strength, his feet are dynamic, um, and he's he's, in, he's the most instinctive player I've ever been around. And you'll start, you'll get to, you guys, hopefully, you guys get to see a little bit of that on Saturday. Merrill, it's great to talk to you. I have to tell you, I was playing Tecmo Super Bowl. This is a true story with the Bengals against the Steelers, and uh, the CP, <laughs> the computer version of yourself, was absolutely destroying me. Well, you know what? You know what's funny about that story? Um, there was a year. See, that was the year I made the All Madden team. So if you're on the All Madden team, you were almost virtually unstoppable. But I did have one flaw. If you hit if you hit the C button way too much, I would fumble on occasion. Well, I went into Philadelphia. We were playing the Philadelphia Eagles, and um, this guy, kid named Jeff Graham, we drafted from Ohio State. He, I just kind of brought him under my wing. He was he'd held out his rookie year as a third round draft pick, and. Now, I think our Philly was our second or third game, and we walked down the field early to stretch, warm up. They just let fans in. And there was this fan that was at the bottom of the arena following me and just, I mean, like tongue lashing me like I had never been tongue lashed before, calling me every name <laughs> in the book. I mean, just butchering me. We're walking down the field. Jeff Graham's like, man, is this the NFL? I'm like, well, not really. This is Philly. I mean, I, I, go, I don't know what the <laughs> guy's problem is. But as we head back towards – the, the end zone, so we went 100 yards down, we're about 50 back, and he finally yells, you idiot, you lost technical for me. And I'm like, what hit the C button? Because I, cause I'm, I'm sure I probably fumbled. I go, because if you hit the C button too much, it, uh, I'd fumble. So, oh, my gosh. I was like, of all places and of all things, only in Philly would that happen. C button, oh, man, it'll get you. That's fantastic. Merrill, it's been great to talk to you. Let's do this again soon. 
All right. Good luck to you guys Saturday. Take care, man. Thanks. Merrill Hodge on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, <laughs> your timeline.